If you have ongoing exposure to controlling people, it's a virtual certainty that you're going to experience blurry boundaries, which is why I have created the extensive online course called This Is Me, Establishing Boundaries with the Controllers in Your Life. There's a link below that will give you all of the details, and I hope that you would find it therapeutic. In order for somebody to be considered narcissistic, there are several distinct and identifiable features that go along with that that are in play. For example, highly narcissistic people are very controlling, they're very self-absorbed, they have attitudes of entitlement, uh, they have low levels of empathy, they're users and manipulators, they have what we call alternate reality, they just kind of make up things to suit their narrative as they go along, they must be superior, they have a pathological defensiveness because they're so busy uh, propping up a false self. Those are the features that we talk about when we refer to narcissism. Now, some people are so out there and it, it, they're so overt in the way that they display their narcissism, they don't leave a whole lot of room to the imagination. There's a whole category, though, of narcissism that we refer to as covert narcissism because all of those ingredients are inside that person, but you don't necessarily see it right up front. And these individuals can go quite some time in the way that they engage with people, covering it up, only to find out later on that those characteristics have been there for the duration. And so you're over there thinking, well, why didn't I see it? And how do you detect if somebody truly is a covert narcissist? Now, there's one enormous uh, way that you can tell if a person is a covert narcissist, and it's simply this. Their external um, persona is very inconsistent with their behind-the-scenes uh, persona in private. That's how you're going to tell. Uh, these individuals have, you know, it's like they have two different ways of, of doing things. One in the way that everybody out there is going to see and measure, and then two, what people behind the scenes actually see and experience. Now, uh, this can come out in all sorts of different ways. For example, somebody may present themselves, that narcissist may present themselves as being very ethical and pure and moral in the way that they deal with people. But behind the scenes, there's a whole lot of corruption that is part of the way they do things. They just don't let people see it, but you you eventually begin to discover it. Or it could be that that narcissist in public appears to be very supportive of you, whether we're talking about a family situation or in work or uh, friendships. But then you learn later on that behind the scenes, they're very dismissive. And then we have to ask, well, which one's the real one? And it's like, well, it's not that uh, public persona, that's for sure. Or just right along with it, uh, they can give you even the impression, well, I'm really on your team. And yet at the same time, they can harbor hidden resentments only for you to find that out later on. Uh, they want to try to make themselves be, uh, to be the, uh, uh, the most supportive and encouraging person when in fact, no, they're really not. They, there's a lot of anger gurgling on the inside. You just don't see it right up front. Or it could be the quintessential uh, illustration of uh, someone presenting to, as, uh, to the public as being uh, the family guy. But then behind the scenes, inside the family home, <laughs> they disappear. Uh, they have all their uh, little habits or uh, pleasure kind of things, whether it's sitting and, and uh, disappearing with video games or they're constantly gone with their golf buddies or whatever it might be. And so that family guy persona, or for that matter, uh, 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 the caring mother behind the scenes isn't there in the least, although folks think that it's there. So in general, that covert narcissist is someone that ultimately is a keeper of secrets and they absolutely refuse to admit, especially publicly, the discrepancies that are a part of their life. It's like, no, there's nothing discrep not discrepant about the way I do things. When in fact, you're over there behind the scenes thinking, I'm seeing an entirely different person. Now, once a person commits to this covert style 
of narcissism. There are all sorts of other trends that tend to go along with this, and the more you're able to see what these trends are, the more it confirms what you're dealing with. For example, covert narcissists are known as simply being fair-weather friends. As long as everything's going fine, they're on your team, but that's it. Uh, they can start relationships strong, but they have a very difficult time sustaining it over the long haul. You know, once that initial feel-good experience begins to, to wane. Or they pr like to present themselves as better than they really are, and they live for praise and admiration from other individuals. And when you realize that seems to be a really, really strong pattern, uh, typically that's something that goes along with the covert narcissism. Uh, another uh, strong indicator of covert narcissism is they cannot, and when I say cannot, they absolutely cannot think about themselves with analytical or reflective thinking. Uh, uh, they, it's not like they, uh, they like to uh, probe and say, why do I respond the way I do? And why did I do this? And I know there are certain things inside of me that don't go there. They just blame. Uh, now, uh, that being the case, when you try to talk with them about some of the things that need to be addressed, uh, covert narcissists will very quickly go to the victim status. It's like, how dare you say things about me? Don't you see all the nice things that I do and how pleasant and friendly I am? And they appeal to that public persona. When you, and when you say, well, let's pull that back and, and uh, recognize there's a whole lot of other stuff going on here. It's like, no, you're, you're just making my life miserable. Uh, that being the case, another trend that tends to be quite consistent with covert narcissists is they can't address conflicts well. In fact, uh, whenever uh, you have a conflict that needs to be resolved, A, they won't receive your input, and then B, they absolutely won't show any kind of empathy for you and your perceptions and why you feel as you do. They, they just can't go there. And then over time, you realize this person has no interest at all in knowing me or listening. All they want to do is tell and superimpose their preferences. That's it. They exaggerate their positives. They minimize their negatives, which is another way, uh, as I said uh, just a minute ago, of saying they're, they're secret keepers and they're liars. Um, that's a nice way to put it. Um, and even if they do have to admit some of the blunders or mistakes, let's say that you caught them red-handed doing something wrong, they'll, they'll way too quickly declare themselves to be absolved. Well, yeah, I know I did this. It was really wrong, but it's, that's all finished now. I'm, I'm done. I'm good. And they, they don't really go into that depth, as I had mentioned. Now, as long as you're with a covert narcissist, you're going to get along fine with them if uh, you follow one primary requirement that they have of you. And that requirement is, I need you to prop me up. I need you to go along with my narrative, uh, that public persona that I have, uh, I want you to uh, to believe in it every every bit as much as I believe in it, and never ever ever can you call me out. That's when you know, okay, uh, I'm dealing with somebody who has strong narcissistic tendencies, whether they uh, show it to other individuals or not. We've got a problem. And, and so, at some point, when you begin uh, to to wise up to this, and you can see behind the veil that they present out there in public, you, you begin realizing my self-respect is not going to allow me to just be a prop. I, I can't do that. Now, once you show yourself to that covert narcissist and you let it be known, I I'm on to you and this isn't working, that's when the covert narcissism becomes much more overt. You're going to see it in full form at that point. Uh, the, the control and the lack of empathy and the need for superiority is going to show in very strong ways. You will be negated. You will be invalidated and it can get very ugly. And then at some point it becomes uh, clear to you, uh, this is a relationship that, uh, this is just built upon smoke and mirrors and I don't want to have anything to do with it. So I'm hoping you can at least see what we're dealing with when we talk about covert narcissism. It's all about the public image. And when you see behind the scenes that that nice and friendly and pleasant and supportive uh, person is not anywhere close to what they purport to be, uh, and then when you call them out and it turns ugly, 
that's when you have to decide, you know, this is not a relationship that's going to work well at all. And my need for self care is going to have to, is going to require me to determine where I'm going to go next. Because like I say, I don't think I can be anyone's prop and maintain my sense of self-respect. So I do hope that a video such as this gives you a good idea of what we're dealing with when we talk about covert narcissism. If you've not already subscribed, uh, I would encourage you to hit that subscribe button and the uh, notification bell that goes along with it. We'll keep more videos coming at you so you can learn about this, this pattern. Uh, if you have a need for therapy, uh, you know by now uh, that I have a sponsor that uh, will take you to a whole team of licensed professional therapists. The link is below, and it may be that you'll need somebody that can help you unpack all of this, keeping in mind that covert narcissists in particular, they're so image conscious, they can do a really good job trying to do the smear campaign. And so if you can get a therapist that can help you sift that out, um, uh, that would be uh, most beneficial. So I would encourage you to go to the link if that need is there. In addition, I have courses. Uh, these are video courses that uh, have multiple videos with written material and lots of questions that will walk you through a therapeutic process and setting boundaries and finding yourself. We have more courses coming along. And so uh, check the links that we have below for that. And I would hope you would find those to be a real strong therapeutic process for you. Also, I have my books and other resources. Okay, covert narcissism by definition is they don't show themselves up front. And so it takes a little bit of time for it to be revealed. But once you begin to see it, then I'm hoping that that sense of your own self-respect and self-care comes to the forefront because they're sure not going to do it. Uh, I'm, I'm wanting you to, to uh, make sure that you stand in your own dignity and your own respect and your own civility as opposed to allowing them to set your pace. And in doing so, it positions you to be a person of steadiness and, and a person of peace. I want you to be a person of peace.